the St. Regis Parish family gathers for the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. There are two announcements. The Diocese of Greensburg's 2021 Men's Conference, The Well, will be held next Saturday, September 25th, at Christ Our Shepherd Center. To register, visit the website dioceseofgreensburg.org slash the well. Enjoy the Knights of Columbus Bingo here at St. Regis Church next Sunday, September 26th at 1 p.m. Low $15 door fee for 20 regular games. Food available. $150 jackpot guaranteed for cover all bingo. That's bingo next sad Sunday, 1 p.m. The opening hymn is number 910, O God Beyond All Praising. Number nine, one, zero. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we come to open ourselves to the grace of this sacrament, of word and sacrament, that we can uh, invest ourselves in the wisdom from above, as we hear in today's reading from the letter of St. James. So as we prepare ourselves for this celebration, that we may be open to God's wisdom to follow in His ways. Let us call to mind our sins and ask our merciful God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, Your law is perfect. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your decree is trustworthy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your ordinances are true. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. 
We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, Grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test, that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord 
in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. And the fruits of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? It is, is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive. Because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. God has called us through the gospel possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And, after three, and three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking, taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, 
Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome to this week's edition of Father George's Fun with Vocabulary. As a communicator, I love words. Uh, our word discipline and our word disciple that we have in English actually come from the same, they trace themselves back to the same Latin root. And so a uh, disciple, simply put, is one who follows the discipline of a teacher, the discipline or teaching of a teacher or master. And so we call ourselves disciples, and the one whose teaching we follow is Jesus Christ. In the days when Jesus was doing his ministry, we hear about the disciples, the disciples, the disciples, they're always with Jesus. The disciples are always with Jesus. And sometimes we're talking about the twelve, and sometimes we're talking about that larger group of followers of Jesus. And as Jesus is going about his ministry, he is teaching them. Mark tells us that you know, in addition to all of the other public teaching that Jesus is doing, he is also continuing to help his disciples along. And as today's gospel makes clear, they need all the help they can get. We heard last week Jesus for the first time begin to talk about his impending passion and death. Today's gospel, we're a little bit further down the road. Jesus is now on his way to Jerusalem and again, he is telling his disciples about what must happen whenever he gets to Jerusalem. And the disciples are afraid to question him. They still don't get it. Now, I don't know if they were just that obtuse that they didn't get the teaching yet, or whether they chose to remain a little bit ignorant because what Jesus, remember the end of the gospel last week, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. They're having a hard time with that too. So much so that while Jesus is teaching them about the Son of Man must suffer and be put to death and rise again, that this is, the, obedience, this is the, the son being obedient to the father's will, the disciples are arguing as they go along about which one of them is the greatest. And that is totally contrary to everything that Jesus is teaching because what Jesus is teaching is total abandonment to the father's will. Selfless love. And that's what the cross is, selfless love. That is, to use the language of St. James today, that is the wisdom which comes from above. And the disciples are not there yet. St. James says where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is where conflict and all kinds of unpeaceable things come from. And then that kind of what the disciples are doing, they're arguing about which one is the greatest. That's, that's ambition, that's selfish ambition. And Jesus says, you know, he gives us that, you know, brings that little child into their midst. A child who would have had no social standing in those days. Whoever receives a one such as this receives me. Again, selfless love. And so whether it is the disciples of Jesus at the beginning 
or whether it is us, the disciples of Jesus today, the church, it is still for us to follow the discipline of our teacher. If we truly want to call ourselves disciples. And so it is for us to open ourselves to the wisdom which comes from above. To get beyond thinking just like a human being. To get beyond the wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world which teaches us that we are always supposed to look out for number one. The wisdom of this world which teaches us that we're supposed to get as much as we can get and it doesn't matter about anybody else. The wisdom of this world means that we place ourselves at the center of the universe. And everything and everyone else, including God, revolves around us. My political point of view is the right one. My outlook on life is the right one. I deserve always good things and never bad things. Me, 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 I, I, I. That's the wisdom of the world. And it's that wisdom that leads to jealousy and selfish ambition and all of those other negative outcomes. That's where conflict comes from, St. James tells us. And that is antithetical to the gospel. Jesus calls his disciples, those back then and us now, to follow him. Selfless love. And that means we are open to that wisdom which comes from above, that wisdom which is divine, that wisdom which comes from God. And when we are open to that wisdom, then we can put things in their proper perspective and recognize that it is God that must be at the center of our lives. Not our passions, not our ambitions, not our desires, but God. And then everything else we can put into perspective. Because that wisdom which comes from above is pure. It is peaceable. It is just. It is merciful. And when we take that divine wisdom to heart, then the fruits of our work are evident. The fruits of our discipleship are evident. That is the life for which we strive. That is the call that we have as disciples. Whoever wishes to be first of all must be the servant of all. That's the example of Jesus. That is the call of disciples. And it does take us a lifetime to get our minds around that. The disciples are still growing in understanding in the gospel, trying to grasp what Jesus is telling them. To get over their own ambitions. To get over their own short-sightedness to get over their own lack of faith, to get over their own fears. And so for us too, as we journey with the Lord, as we seek to be open to that wisdom which comes from above, we seek to get over our own fears, our own ambitions, all of those things that keep us from God, all of those things that cause us to act in con contrary to the gospel. And so we come here to listen to God's word so that we can be open every time we hear it. Sometimes you know, these passages that we hear of scripture are very familiar to us. And that's okay. We need to keep mining those riches of sacred scripture, gaining new insight into that wisdom which comes from above that we can get over ourselves and beyond ourselves.
to live as the disciples that we are truly called to be, following the discipline of our Master all the way to the cross, so that as we go forth in our lives, as we live that wisdom which comes from above, we can live selflessly at peace with mercy, with generosity and compassion, with love, demonstrating by our lives that we truly belong to Christ and that we are following the discipline of our Master. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With humble service, we pray now for the needs of the church and our world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer for leaders of the church, that they see themselves as servants of the people, serving with wisdom and mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations torn apart by war and political unrest, that they seek peaceful alternatives to violence. We pray. for judges, advocates, and elected government officials, that they uphold the rights of the poor and serve their people without greed or abuse of power. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father George, on the celebration of his 25th year of ordination, that he will continue to have grace and joy from God as a pastor and an abundance of blessings from the people whom he serves. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father George and all priests, deacons, sisters, and brothers whom God has sent in the name of Christ to serve the Church of Greensburg, that they will inspire many more 
to consider a vocation to consecrated life and ordained ministry. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here as we praise God together, may we follow God's precepts and live in the presence of the Lord. We pray. For all our beloved who have died, may they be raised to new life in Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way Angie Hickson. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. Lord Jesus, you reveal that true discipleship is found in the desire to become the servants of all. May we, the household of the church, be willing to shed our lives for your sake and the sake of the gospel, so as to serve you without counting the cost. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring new sight to those searching for light. God has chosen me, chosen me. God's kingdom is near to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near. God's time is near. God's time is near. God's time is near. God has chosen me. God has chosen me to set a light on God has chosen me, God has chosen me to bring to birth a new kingdom on earth. God has chosen me, chosen me, and to tell the world that God's kingdom is near to remove oppression and break down fear. Yes, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near, God's time is near. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through the Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. God of hosts, 
heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Regis and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 664, Taste and See, number 664.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our closing hymn is number 901, Go Be Justice, number 901. Justice to God's people, teach the heart and heart to learn. Break the bread of true communion, pour the cup of true concern. Feed the hungry, house the homeless, catch the tyrants in their lives. Be the Lord's anointed servant, so God's justice never dies. Go be healing to God's people, seek and share the saving call. Be the touch of Christ for others, be the voice of Christ for all. Lives are broken all around you, and Christ has no hands but yours. Hold in them, thou ones who suffer, so Christ's healing love endures. Go be mercy to God's people, in forgiveness freely shown. Find the stranger, call her kindred, find the exile, call him home. Age to age, God's mercy welcomes with a love that will not cease. Go be Christ's light to God's people, be an instrument of 